Here's my solution to last week's modeling challenge. Starting with a quick search on Google for a reference, I pull this into Blender, adding a circle 32 verts and roughly matching it up with the first rung of the blaster. Adding two loop cuts through the middle, I then scale these up on everything but the X axes and adding an array modifier set to eight. I'm missing this little bridge between each rung, so I extrude out the verts, but this then makes the design too long. So I scale back along the X axes in object mode to correct the length and then scale the rung along the X axes to add a little bit more depth back into the design. From there, there, I apply the array modifier and isolate the back three rungs, add in a cylinder and roughly match that up with the blaster handle. I then cut a loop through the middle rung, set my snap base to active and my snap target to vertex and align the middlemost edge of my cylinder with the newly placed edge loop and scale the cylinder down so that it intersects more to the middle of the main mesh's back face. I mark all the cylinder edges as sharp to make them easier to track after running a boolean operation, apply the boolean, cut the mesh down to a quarter and slap on a mirror modifier to reduce the amount of topology work. It's then just a matter of dissolving some unnecessary edges and merging verts to properly integrate the two shapes together. We can then add a support loop to the back intersection here by redirecting an edge and subdividing three vertical edges to create a support loop. We can then do a final bit of cleanup by adding an additional loop, cutting in a new edge between these two points and removing all of our sharp edges. Adding in a subdivision surface modifier will show us any verts that haven't been merged properly or edges that don't have correct support loops, which we can address by adding in extra creasing and an additional support loop around the base of the intersection. If you're concerned about the triangles and n-gons on the mesh, you'll notice that they resolve quite nicely into quads once subdivided and add proper support loops to our edges. So this is a good example for how you can use both triangles and n-gons in sub-D modeling. We can then apply our mirror modifier and join our meshes back together since the challenging part of the modeling process is complete. From there, it's just a matter of extruding, scaling and insetting the mesh to create the back portion of the blaster and adding in some additional support loops. We can then model the hollowed out connector at the front with basic extrusions and insets and use similar simple extruding, scaling and beveling techniques to model the stud. To do the inside of the stud, we can reuse some of our existing topology to make the two pieces logically connect with one another with a more detailed process being outlined with my full length YouTube tutorial. Finally, the shaders are really quite simple. Using the principled shader with a roughness of 0.3 and a dark value, we can make the main blaster material. Using a very similar setup for the stud, we'll make it red with a roughness of once again 0.3 and a transmission value of 0.9 for that translucent appearance. For the finishing touch, we can find a LEGO logo normal map online, unwrap the front faces of the stud and adjust the UV scale to adjust the size of the logo and reduce the bump intensity of the normal map for a better looking result. And there you have it. That's how you can model a LEGO blaster in Blender.